we've got Koo from No Film School, me, who you should know if you're watching this, <laughs> Mitch from Planet 5D. Let's see, this is proof that vloggers actually get along. There are a lot of vloggers that get along. Yeah. You know, there's <laughs> only a couple that are out there. Yeah. Um, no, what I was saying, like, it's, we were just discussing any being and kind of seeing it from a different perspective. Like, who you're saying, you're. Your focus as a filmmaker, as your website is no film school, mm -hmm. you're talking for primarily from a filmmaker's background. And I do like making films. I get a chance to do it super often because there's not a lot of money in it, obviously. Uh, and so most of my background is commercial production, mm -hmm. which is a totally different beast, obviously. And so when I see things I'm looking for, how can I make my production a little more efficient? How can I bring my cost down right, to exactly. my client and stuff like that? Uh, versus you're probably looking at how can this be more creative for me mm -hmm. and, and make my creative process easy. Right. And then Mitch, you know, one thing I love about Plan 5D is it's so community driven. And for the rest of us, we don't have as much time because we're kicking out a weekly show. We're kicking out uh, news content on, on a different level. You're very community driven with your chat room, with your forum, and, and that's and it's a very positive environment. I've been to some chat rooms that and some forums that it, it feels like everybody's trying to one up each other. But yeah, your forum's very help, trying to help, let people help each other out. Well, I, I specifically was very goal oriented in that regard. That I'm not normally goal oriented, but. You know, when you come into the, to the forums, you have to agree that you're going to be a nice guy. You know, if, if, if your mother t taught you to not say anything bad about people, then you agree to that. So it's very important to be positive and give constructive criticism, but keep it positive. But what we, I mean, what we started out talking about before Sean turned on the camera was the fact that how difficult it is to cover a show like this with so much going on. You're being dragged in different directions. You're talking to people constantly, but yet you've still got this nagging thing if you know you've got your readership wanting information. Um, I tried to started out trying to do a live blog. I think you're doing one, aren't you? Kind of. Uh, well, depends okay. on your definition of live. Well, yeah. I mean, I actually had a plug-in that was a live blog plug-in, and you know, I it set up on the iPhone. I could just go in and post a little thing, and it would go. And then first thing Monday is it crashed, and it was down. And I didn't take the time to try to go fix it because there were too many people to see, too much to do on the show floor. And so the whole day I've got this nagging thing, I know that page is dead, and I know I've told people I would be doing live blogging, and it's dead, but I'm sorry people, but I'm too busy. And, and yeah, for us, like, you know, we, we promise we're gonna kick out daily content, and of course it takes a lot, we, there's a crew of Sean and I, and Sean's been doing a ton, I've been doing a ton, where we, we go interview as much as we can, and then we try to edit in the evening, and it takes, good chunk of time to edit each video and then try and upload it with hotel. Yeah, we're on our laptops, you know, we didn't have the, didn't really exactly have the money to bring our rigs with us or anything either, or, or like, you know, like with, uh, well, Fresh TV, they had a pretty sweet setup you saw, you know, like with the edit chair and everything, but we just didn't have the butt to do that. I mean, we're able to get it done, but it takes a little bit more time. Exactly. And, and then the other thing is like, you can edit anytime. NAB is, is only here and now, and so we can either spend all of our time uploading the content that we already shot, or we can go out and try and cover everything that we want to. Well, and that was, you know, I, you know, I talked about that was a conscious decision I've made to just try to get some interviews and do some stuff, but it, it, it takes such a long time to do all that other work that you end up not being on the floor. And, and so you've, you've got to make a conscious decision that you're going to be constant uploader and, and missing things or maybe a couple of crews, you know, pay for all of that or you just, I mean, you're, you're even torn like Koo was saying, of, there are two things happening at the same time. Which one do you cover and how do you report it so that you get the news of it? Now, like, for you, wanting to shoot your own film mm -hmm. and what, what has any beef been for you like that? You know, it, it's like a, it's a conflict because there might be a certain steady cam or something that I'm interested in using it for my production and so I want to go talk to them and, and you know, find out about running that and that kind of thing but then I don't think maybe many of my readers care about this particular thing so you know you have a responsibility to try and report what your community what your audience cares about but then you, as a filmmaker you also want to be just going off and 
learning as much as you can <coughs> for your own project. So it's sort of a, um, as you said, it's, you, know, you can only be in one place and it's tough. Yeah, and like for us too, most of our training is geared towards the starter to mid-level shooter. Um, but there's, there's so much news here that people are going to want to see. I guarantee you, most of the people that watch my videos aren't going to buy an Ari Alex. Right. right. But, of course, guy cam or cable cam. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the, the news is there, and, it's, and, it's, and we're standing there. I want to interview it. I want to find out that information. Absolutely. And, and people are going to want to see it. And if we have the ability, like I say, I think we were the first people to YouTube with coverage on the RE, the new Alexa cams. And, um, and, and we're going to try and do that. And I hope that people don't get alienated and thinking that, you know, is not relatable, but it's just mainly no, but it's to also them. aspirational. I mean, you can right. see how if you're shooting on a cheap camera now, that you know, hopefully that production will open doors, and then your next production maybe you can shoot on that. So you, you know, even if you're not going to be using that tomorrow, you want to keep tabs on what's going on in the higher end. I think mean, right. I hope that's why. Right. Right. And you know, what I think is too like you know, there's a reason that new cameras, are, the reason the 5D has such great video quality is uh, and, and why it's being adopted. You know, it's not the perfect tool by any means, but people haven't settled for, like, you know, the DVX100 was a solid camera at its time, but if you tried to, to put it up to some of the higher end cameras, and now it doesn't have the dynamic range, the resolution, anything, right? That's some of the new cameras. So we haven't settled, and then to see a camera like the Alexa, phenomenal image quality. Who's to say that 10 years from now the Alexa could be fitting in a camera like our XA10 right now? Oh, well, I mean, you might say that the F3 is like an Alexa, this one, my package, and it's got about. I think in the test last night we saw it, it, uh, it measured the Alexa at 14.3 stops, which is, which is more than film. Right. And it measured the F3 at like 11.2, which was the same as the 5D. So the F3 doesn't have the same dynamic range, but you know, looking at, at the rest of the images, it's very much a mini Alexa. You know, for a sixth of the price and about the same, you know, sixth of the size. Right. And you know, too, like, the X10, XA10 from Canon has impressed me enough. Like, if you go back five years ago, the image quality, the resolution that this little camera has was only in the super high end broadcast camera, really. I mean, right. Absolutely. And then we see it now stuck in, in this little camera. So that, that encourages me to think that, in, you know, 10 years from now. I think 10 years, you're talking five. Yeah. Yeah, I think 10 is way too far out. It'll be sooner than that. I mean, you know, you go back to the. Well, who's about to pull out his can his, his camera no, 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 phone? I gotta, I gotta go oh, okay. So, but so. you know, the Canon had that 120 megapixel chip that was in the APS-C size you know, back in September and came at the Expo. I mean, look, these things are going really fast now. Getting them manufactured and put out, you know, like three-year cycle with the Canon 5Ds, it's it's still likely not to be. Five years is probably the closest, but you know, things are moving. Cool, guys. All right, gotta get back to NAB. Uh, yeah, there's a Sony seminar that I'm going to as a filmmaker that I'm interested in that uh, starts at 10. Cool. Enjoy the rest of the show. You guys too. All right. Thanks, Coach. Cool. See you guys. See you. Bye-bye. Subscribe to us on YouTube and visit nextwavedv.com for more news and training for video and filmmakers.